As you've heard, my name is Patricia Lohr, and I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist. And after I finished my core training, I completed a fellowship in family planning and contraception research, so focusing my career on abortion and contraception. In my career, I've helped people with pregnancy, whether they wanted to prevent one, whether they wanted to continue one, if they were losing one, or they wanted to end one. The idea that people should have the right to determine the course of their lives is what initially engaged me in abortion care. As an undergraduate, I was involved in pro-choice politics. It was a right. But it was actually a death that made me decide to devote my career to ensuring that people can access the abortions that they want and need. In 1998, I was a medical student in California. And in October of that year, Dr. Barnett Slepian in upstate New York was murdered in the kitchen of his home after he'd come home from a memorial service for his father. Dr. Slepian was an abortion provider in his community, and he was killed for providing abortion care. The murder was one of five sniper attacks by anti-abortion extremists in four years in northern New York and in Canada. And Dr. Slepian was the fourth doctor, and up to that time, the seventh person in the United States to be murdered for performing abortions. Now that number stands at 11. At that point, I decided that if I had the knowledge and the skill to provide abortions and the moral fortitude to do so, then I should do so. Because it became very clear to me that without clinicians willing to provide, women would be compelled to continue pregnancies that they did not want, regardless of the legal framework. As I continued in my medical training, I learned to appreciate the public health need for abortion. One in three women has an abortion. Look around this room. One in three women. And this statistic is true around the world. And it doesn't matter if abortion is legal or illegal. One in three women will end a pregnancy through abortion in their lifetime. The difference, of course, is that where abortion is restricted, thousands of women die. And hundreds of thousands of women are injured every year from abortions attempted by untrained providers in unhygienic conditions or by themselves on their own, alone, and taking desperate measures. So pregnancy for women seeking abortion, in my view, is not just about a biological or developmental process, but the potential for a biographical existence. And it's intertwined with hers. And it's upon which she makes her choice at the same time, knowing that there is biology at play, there are things happening that signal life. And there is development happening every day that makes that pregnancy in her uterus more and more recognizable and like us, but not the same as us. Not living a life as we know it as she knows it, as she experiences it, and as she envisions it. So this is where empathy comes into play so strongly for me and for many people who perform abortions. Because I cannot envision a circumstance in which I would actively withdraw my skills so that a woman is compelled to continue a pregnancy that for whatever reason she cannot continue. In doing so, and in acting with that degree of empathy, it is absolutely the case that a potential life is put in a subordinate position to a woman's life. But I think it remains morally responsible to do so. And in many ways, when life begins is subjective for the woman who's pregnant and as an empathetic provider of care to her, I must act in response to her subjective interpretation. In a lot of ways, this cycles me back to what initially motivated me to become involved in this issue, which is protecting a woman's right to self-determination. 
But in this case, now, as the person who can help her realize her goal, facilitating that right to self-determination in a less political way, in a more personal way, in a way that's less about me and more about her, and when she is ready to bring a life into this world as she knows it. Thank you.